The day we're taking a look at these MLB matches, which are happening on Sunday, April 2nd, 2023, and giving you our team and total picks for today. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and to push the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Also check out our Patreon if you want access to our premium picks. Our Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money, and if you are interested in props and parlay picks, check out our new channel High Stakes Props and Parlays, where you can find our player props and parlay picks predictions. You will find the link to our Patreon and to our new channel in the description and comments section below. Chicago White Sox vs Houston Astros The Astros send right-handed pitcher Luis Garcia to the hill for this game, in hopes of taking the series win over the White Sox. Garcia posted a 15-8 record with a 3.72 record and a 1.13 whip on over the course of the season last year, very solid numbers for the bottom of their rotation. Garcia faced the White Sox once last season and got the win despite only throwing five innings and allowing three runs in the process. We shall see how Garcia performs against the Sox in this game, however I would expect their recent production on offense to benefit him again as it did in his game against the White Sox last season. The Astros have not struggled on the offensive end in their past two games, hosting six runs in both, courtesy of impressive performances from their stars Kyle Tucker and Jordan Alvarez. Alex Brigman continued to struggle at the plate going 0-5 and having yet to record his first hit on the season. Meanwhile, Jordan Alvarez continued upon his early success going 3-5 in the game with one RBI and two runs scored. Kyle Tucker went 2-5 with both of his hits being two-out RBIs, while Lowe's A. Abreu also went 2-5 with an RBI that came off a two-out hit. Overall there are no complaints on the offensive end for the Astros, as they can only hope their offense continues to produce at this level. Taking the Astros to win this game for a couple of reasons. The odds are a little high for this game, so if you are not comfortable taking the money line at minus 170, I would recommend taking the run line at minus 1.5 for plus 115, similar to yesterday. The Astros have a considerable edge on the mound, starting Luis Garcia versus the White Sox Mike Clevenger, along with an edge in the bullpen and the lineup. I would expect a similar outcome to the past two days, with solid pitching performances from the Astros, paired with some good situational hitting from their lineup, particularly Jordan Alvarez and Kyle Tucker. In terms of trends, the Astros have won in their past four games with Garcia on the bump and in their past five game fours of a series. The White Sox do not have any trends influencing us to take their ML or spread, especially taking in the fact that the White Sox have an 11-23 record in their last 34 meetings with the Astros and a 5-17 record in their past 22 meetings in Houston. For these reasons, our team pick is Houston Astros' money line. Taking the over in this matchup for a couple of reasons. We have seen a lot of games go over to start the season due to the new rules, and considering the caliber of pitching for this matchup, this game very well should go over. Both teams have been producing well offensively, with the White Sox scoring three runs in their first two games and four runs in their most recent, while the Astros have scored six runs in their past two games of this series. These teams have already gone over in their past two matchups this series, despite going under in the first game due to some stellar starting pitching from both teams' aces. In terms of trends, the White Sox have gone over in their past six game fours of a series and in five of their past six games against the Al West. Meanwhile, the Astros have gone over in four of their past five games, where the total is set at or over 8.5. I expect a similar result to these past two games with the Astros putting up a bundle of runs, while the White Sox produce accordingly to keep them in the game. For these reasons, I am confident in taking the over for this matchup. Our total pick is over 8.5 runs. Milwaukee Brewers vs Chicago Cubs Pitching was considered to be the strong suit for the Brewers coming into the season, but there was concern about whether they would generate enough offense to put games in the win column after their struggles last season. So far in 2023, we've seen that offense is still problematic for Milwaukee. After totaling just four hits in the opener, the Brewers were handcuffed in the early stages of Saturday's game, as Justin Steele blanked them over the first six innings. Until Milwaukee starts hitting, it's tough to have faith in a team that has no runs through their first 15 innings. Chicago wasn't great offensively in the opener, but they at least have put runs on the board. Give the advantage to the Cubs here as Talon wins his Chicago debut. Our team pick is Chicago Cubs. I'm expecting the total to be around 7 runs, and I think that these two teams will combine to earn at least 7 in this game. Neither pitcher is of the same quality as the starters before them, so I expect more of an offensive performance out of both teams. In each of the two games played so far, the victor got their win based off of one big inning that led to their total number of runs. I expect more big innings from both sides, resulting in more runs. 
I expect Yellick to improve from his 1-4-6 start at the plate, and Cody Bellinger is due for a hit after going 0-7 for seven to start the year. Take the over. Los Angeles Angels vs. Oakland Athletics. Oakland's pitching wasn't the worst in the American League last year, but their 4.52 ERA was third highest, and their 1.33 whip was fourth highest. They allowed the opposition to hit .256 against them, tied for second highest average against in the AL Waldachik made seven starts in his MLB debut season last year, logging 34.2 innings. The 25-year-old righty made his best start against the Angels last year, tossing seven scoreless innings while sticking out four and allowing three hits and a walk. Anderson may just be what the doctor ordered for the Angels. Tough, gritty, no-nonsense southpaw whose competitiveness is desperately needed on that bench. He has a strong command of three pitches, four seam, change, curve, and mixes his pitches very well. His weird delivery can also deceive hitters' timing. He obviously wants to get off on the right foot and show his new club that is worth the $40 million they threw his way. The Angels bats back Shahei Atani's brilliant opening day start with five measly hits and no runs. Los Angeles's offense was down last year as well, hitting just .233 as a whole, 12th in the American League. The Oakland offense is the best place for him to show off, and he's proved in the past that he likes pitching against them. In Game 3, I fully expect the Los Angeles offense to show up now as well, and they should be able to back Anderson's efforts with a few runs. The Athletics have won four straight against the Angels at home, but prior to those games, Los Angeles swept them for three on their home turf. The Angels can win in Oakland, despite the more recent results. Take the Angels with the run line. Head to head the last three meetings have gone under, as has six of the last seven and eight of ten. Over those last 10 matchups, these two teams have averaged a combined 5.4 runs per game. Last season the Angels had 80 of their games go under, while Oakland has 82 of their games land under the total. These are two of the lesser producing offenses from a year ago, and neither did a whole lot to bolster their output. The under is 5-0 in the Angels' last five against a left-handed starter, and is 9-3-1 in the last 13 meetings in Oakland. Take the under. Detroit Tigers vs Tampa Bay Rays. The Tigers' slow start offensively has to be concerning after the team's lack of run production in 2022. The Tigers now face a left-hander in Springs that held them scoreless last season in his one start against them and had an ERA of just 2.23 at home last season. In addition, the Tigers were just 20th in the majors in batting average against lefties last season. Detroit hit just .264 against lefties in 2022. Lastly, Detroit was next to last in baseball in batting average on the road in 2022. Things aren't looking much better out of the gate this season, with just two runs and two hits over the first two games. Take the Rays with the run line. Going up against a pitcher with not too many games under his belt, Joey Wentz should be able to limit the amount of runs against him. Tampa had one major inning, but otherwise scored five runs in the game, and that would have hit the under here. Jeffrey Springs has been doing well and should do well as he pitched to a 2.23 ERA in 16 home games last season. The under has hit in 9 of their previous 13 games played a Tropicana field against one another, so go with under 7.5 runs here. Arizona Diamondbacks vs Los Angeles Dodgers. The Los Angeles Dodgers are once again trotting out a team with a ton of top flight talent, but expectations aren't quite as high as they have been in recent years. LA won a whopping 111 games last season, but are expected to take a step back, as their win total was set at just 94.5. That's because they lost a slew of key guys in free agency, including lineup stalwarts like Justin Turner, Tree Turner and Cody Bellinger. Give me the Dodgers on the run line here. Sure they lost some guys in free agency, but they've still got plenty of pop in their lineup and have put up 8-plus runs in two of their first three games. Noah Syndergaard closed last year strong, and last season was his first time pitching in a couple years, so I think it's reasonable to expect him to be much improved from 2022. Arizona's offense isn't anything to be afraid of, and they've now put up only five total runs across their first three games. The Dodgers also lost some critical relief pitchers and didn't make any splash acquisitions. The team appeared spooked by the luxury tax and will now have a significantly lower peril than we've been accustomed to seeing from Los Angeles. All that being said, they're still pretty loaded. It would be foolish to write off any team with Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts in the heart of the order, and they've scored at least eight runs in two of their first three games to start the year. One cool story here is that it will be the Dodgers' debut of Noah Syndergaard. The former Mets star had a rough few years, but he bounced back with a solid campaign split between the Angels and Phillies last year. D-back starter Zach Davies was much worse on the road last year, and he particularly struggled against the Dodgers. Los Angeles's first two wins of the season have both come by at least six runs, and their offensive upside makes them a very appealing run-line play. Our team pick is Dodgers minus 1.5 runs. 
the over also makes some sense in this spot. Los Angeles very easily could send this one over by themselves, as they just put up 10 runs on Saturday night. They've still got plenty of star power with guys like Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman, but even the unheralded players are capable of stepping up. On Saturday, Trace Thompson hit three home runs. And in five starts against the Dodgers last year, Zach Davies had an ERA of 5.82. Thompson has two home runs in only eight career at-bats against Davies, so he might not be done punishing the backs yet. Syndergaard was solid but certainly not spectacular last year, so I think Arizona will be good for at least a couple of runs off him. And the Dodgers lost some significant pieces in their bullpen this offseason. Our total pick is over 8.5 runs. Cleveland Guardians vs Seattle Mariners. Cleveland will win as Moneyline Dogs on Sunday, as Quantrill will prove he's a factor in the Guardians' rotation with a stellar effort against the M's. Gonzalez will have less success than he's had in the past versus Cleveland, who proved Friday they're still as fun and pesky as any team in baseball. The Guardians' small ball approach was worth the price of attendance in Game 2 and will pay off again on Sunday. The Guardians are 1-5 in the last six meetings and 2-7 in the last nine meetings in Seattle, it's about time for a trend change. Our team pick is the Guardians' money line. I entered this season high on Cleveland's lineup. Outside of Ramirez, you can make the argument that it's not a very flashy lineup, but it sure is consistent. The Guardians had the lowest strikeout rate in baseball last season at 18.2%, to go along with the seventh highest batting average. They added some power this offseason with the addition of Josh Bell, but they are going to be great again this season at manufacturing runs in other ways. Cleveland ranked third in stolen bases in 2022, and steals are expected to increase this season under the new rules. Marco Gonzalez isn't an overpowering pitcher, and he could be in for a long day against this pesky Guardians lineup. The Guardians rebounded nicely after being shut out on opening day by scoring nine runs on Friday. In the other dugout, Seattle has a chance to do a lot of damage at the top of their order if everyone plays to their potential. They'll sprinkle in enough runs on Sunday to help the over hit in this game. Give me the over 8.5 runs.